To a non-video game loving person, a valve is a small mechanical device that's used for regulating the passage of air or liquid through a pipe, one that's found in boilers and under sinks the world over. In the world of video games, however, the word valve is synonymous with high quality titles, digital downloads and failing to deliver sequels to much loved games. Founded in 1996 by former Microsoft employees Gabe Newell and Mike Harrington, Valve has, over the years, become famous for developing games and software that have changed the industry. From first-person shooters that have changed the genre as we know it today, to its digital store Steam, now one of the primary ways that PC gamers get their hands on both the latest titles and those of years past. Indeed, without Valve, the games industry would probably look very different. But have you ever stopped to wonder how Valve's games compare to one another? We have, and so today we're ranking every Valve-developed game from the pretty good to the monumentally brilliant. Usually we'd say from worst to best, but honestly, none of them are what you might call bad. Before we get into the list proper, though, we should probably have a think about what's in and what's out. For the purposes of this list, we're counting anything that Valve has developed or been involved with developing as a Valve game, which means we'll be including a number of titles that were originally developed as mods for others before Valve Valve saw the potential and swooped in to claim them. We won't be including any expansions or tech demos in this ranking, nor will we be including collections, so apologies Orange Box fans, but the compilation won't be making an appearance. Additionally, we're excluding any titles that were published by Valve but not developed by the studio, so I'm afraid the likes of Gary's Mod haven't made the cut either. In terms of how we've determined placement on this list, we've taken a look at the critical reception of each of these games and sorted them accordingly. And where there's a tie, we've used our own personal preference to establish the winner. Everybody happy with all of that? Good. Let's rank them. I'm Ben. And I'm Peter from Triple Jump. And here is every Valve game ranked from worst to best. Number 25. Counter-Strike Condition Zero. PC. This is something of a first for one of these ranked lists, as the game in last place isn't actually a terribly bad one. Admittedly, Counter-Strike Condition Zero isn't going to be appearing on any best video games of all time lists anytime soon, but as first-person shooters go, it's far from the worst. This PC exclusive was released in 2004 and is a remaster of Counter-Strike, the wildly popular first-person shooter that we'll get to in a short while. In addition to shiny new graphics, Condition Zero also includes two single-player campaigns and bots that allow players to get the experience of multiplayer, even if they don't feel like interacting with other people. I understand that desire perfectly. So if Condition Zero was just Counter-Strike, with extra bells and whistles, why is it at the bottom of this list? Well, dear viewer, the answer to that is quite simple. Nothing it did was grand enough to justify its existence. At its core, it was Counter-Strike, but with no market updates to bring the then five-year-old game in line with more modern titles, and whilst the campaigns were serviceable, they were nothing to write home about. In short, Counter-Strike Condition Zero suffered from a serious case of the mediocres. Number 24. Ricochet. PC. Do you like jumping and bright colours? Then by golly are you going to enjoy this game right here. Ricochet, Valve's third title, really is unlike anything we've seen from the studio before or since. In this Tron-like multiplayer title, players must jump between brightly coloured platforms, firing discs at their opponents as they go in order to knock their adversaries off said platforms, all whilst trying to collect power-ups and not get yeeted into the abyss themselves. As is the case with many of Valve's titles, Ricochet started out as a Half-Life mod, though unlike many, this particular particular mod was developed by Valve themselves. In fairness to Ricochet, it wasn't a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. Sure, it was repetitive and lacked any sort of complexity or depth, but it functioned as a game should. The graphics and sound were fine for the time that it was released, and if you were in the market for a bit of mindless multiplayer fun with tons of bright neon colours, then you really could do worse than to play a few rounds of Ricochet. It might not be Valve's finest offering, but it certainly is the most garish. Number 23. Deathmatch Classic. PC. More Half-Life mods for you now as we turn our attention to Deathmatch Classic, a game that recreates the Deathmatch mode from Quake in Valve's Gold Source game engine, which is itself a heavily modified version of id Software's Quake engine. So put simply, it's a recreation of a game built by modding a different game that was developed using an engine that was a mod of the engine used to create the first game. Okay? 
glad that's cleared up. Designed to match the feel and speed of the original Quake Deathmatch mode, Deathmatch Classic updates the title by adding fresh textures, new character and weapon models, more detailed levels, and improved lighting. Valve's homage to id Software's venerable multiplayer first-person shooter wasn't half bad, and when played with a few friends it was absolutely an enjoyable experience, but at the end of the day, it didn't offer a great deal more than the original. If your enjoyment of a game rests on a slight graphical upgrade and the ability to hit things with the crowbar from Half-Life, then perhaps it's worth shelling out a few dollary dues for Deathmatch Classic. Otherwise, you might as well stick with Quake, really. Number 22. The Lab PC Oh, thank God, we've finally gotten to a game that isn't a Half-Life mod. I thought we'd never make it. Set in the Portal universe, The Lab is a collection of mini-games designed to showcase the capabilities of VR, or more accurately, the HTC Vive VR headset. The title is comprised of eight different mini-games, which each take place in a pocket universe inside a pocket universe within the Aperture Science Research Facility. The mini-games include Postcards, which purports itself to be a virtual holiday, Slingshot, which is somewhat akin to Angry Birds, and Robot Repair, which does exactly what it says on the tin. When judging the title solely as a minigame collection, critics found The Lab to be pretty good as it demonstrated what was possible with VR and was entertaining whilst it was at it. Additionally, the game also managed to retain some of the charm of Portal, though admittedly not all of it, and it was accessible to those with little to no virtual reality experience. In comparison to Valve's other offerings, though, The Lab was a little bit disappointing, and if you went into it expecting Portal levels of quality, you'd have walked away feeling mightily short-changed. Number 21. Dota Underlords – PC and Mobile The original Dota and its sequel are notorious for being rather difficult for new players to get their heads around, so if you're looking to dip your toes into the Dota universe but don't have the requisite thousands of hours to get good, then perhaps Dota Underlords is the game for you. Yes, it's not the best Valve game ever made, but it doesn't have over 120 heroes for you to get to grips with, so, you know, there is that. Dota Underlords is based on Dota 2 community mod Dota Auto Chess, and tasks players with strategically placing their heroes on an 8x8 grid in such a way that allows them to defeat their opponent's heroes. After a preparation phase, there is no further input needed from the player as the battle then plays out automatically. Of the whopping three publications that bothered to review Dota Underlords, two felt that it was a competent auto-battler that gave players the opportunity to test their strategic chops in satisfying matches. The other critic wasn't so keen, finding the interface confusing and the gameplay unbalanced. The bottom line, though, was that Dota Underlords wasn't really all that different from the mod that inspired it, so veteran Dota Auto Chess players really had no incentive to try Valve's offering. Number 20. Artifact PC we're sticking with the Dota theme for the moment as we turn our attention to Artifact, the 2018 digital collectible card game designed by Magic the Gathering creator Richard Garfield. No, not that one. Like in Dota 2, the aim of the game is to destroy your opponent's ancient, though aside from the shared universe, that really is where the similarities end. Artifact is played one-on-one -on -one and players must collect little digital cards in order to build themselves a deck capable of besting their adversaries. A deck contains at least 40 cards, but there are literally hundreds for players to collect. Artifact was compared favorably to titles like Hearthstone, with critics praising the depth and complexity of its gameplay along with its art style, brand new assets, and overall presentation. Sadly, it wasn't all good news for Artifact, as both critics and players alike found the learning curve rather steep, and it was admonished for its monetization model, which many felt effectively made it pay to win, and you all know how we feel about that here at Team Triple Jump. We don't like it. Thankfully, the game has since become free to play, and cards are unlocked by playing the title rather than shelling out tons of cash. Good. Number 19. Alien Swarm PC not to be confused with the multi-multi-Oscar award-winning movie Ben 10 Alien Swarm, Valve's Alien Swarm is a multiplayer top-down shooter which is you've guessed it, a remake of a mod, only this time it's a remake of a mod for Unreal Tournament 2004. The game's campaign is set in the year 2052 amidst an alien invasion on a colonized planet, and it's down to players to try to search for survivors and destroy the colony if necessary in order to prevent further spread of the aliens. Up to four players can band together in a cooperative mode, with each able to choose from one of four classes – officer, special weapons, medic, and tech. Once in a game, they must battle their way through waves of enemies using a variety of weapons, and with over 40 different pieces of equipment on offer, there's sure to be armaments to suit everyone. Alien Swarm enjoyed a reasonable critical reception, with some comparing it favorably to Left 4 Dead, only with extraterrestrials rather than zombies. The gameplay was considered to be quite simplistic and the mission objectives somewhat repetitive, but many were willing to overlook these flaws on account of the fact that they could get their hands on it for the low, low price of nothing. It was free. Peter? Number 18. Half-Life Source. PC. 
Half-Life is, without ruining this list too much for you all, one of the best games ever made. And so it should follow that a port of the game to Valve's Source Engine would be equally great, right? Not so, dear viewer, not so. Half-Life Source was released in 2004, some six years after the original debuted on PCs, and to be quite frank, it was a bit of a waste of everyone's time. That being said, it was still Half-Life, so the story was wonderful, the gameplay was captivating, and the graphics were the absolute best that 1998 had to offer. Uh, Peter, I hear you cry, don't you mean the very best graphics that 2004 had to offer? No, dear viewer, no I don't, because Half-Life Source didn't update Half-Life's graphics in any way, shape, or form. Yes, the physics were tweaked, the water effects were improved slightly, and 5.1 surround sound was added in, but aside from that, Half-Life Source didn't have anything more to offer than the original. Well, unless you count all of the bugs, that is. When all said and done, any Half-Life is good Half-Life, with the exception of the horrid hunt down the Freeman, but Half-Life Source is definitely the ham and pineapple at the Half-Life Pizza Buffet. Number 17, Day of Defeat, PC. Before you ask, no, this isn't a game about spending an afternoon round at Quentin Tarantino's house, it's Valve's 2003 multiplayer FPS set during the Second World War. Day of Defeat is, say it with me kids, a game that started out as a mod for Half-Life, and aims to simulate the infantry combat of World War II. Players can choose to fight on the side of the allied nations if they're decent people, or the Axis powers if they're psychopaths, and each team must complete as many of their set objectives as possible within the time limit. Critics were relatively kind to Day of Defeat, and although some were less than impressed with the visuals, which Peter Suchu of GameSpy described as quote, downright ugly in his review, there was plenty to like about the game. Praise was given to the use of space in the title, with some noting how the claustrophobic nature of the game forced players to cooperate with one another, as well as the devs' attention to detail and the relentless pace of the action. Unfortunately for Day of Defeat though, Battlefield 1942 had been released just six months prior, and most critics agreed that the latter outshone the former. Number 16, Day of Defeat Source, PC. Before you ask, no, this isn't a game about spending an afternoon round at Quentin Tarantino's house with a bottle of ketchup. It's the game that we literally just looked at, but ported into Valve Source Engine. Unlike Half-Life Source, Day of Defeat Source was marginally better than the original, so clearly some lessons had been learned here. Rather than simply lifting and shifting the OG Day of Defeat into the Source engine, Valve took the time to refine the game, altering the behaviour of some of the weapons, removing some of the classes, and introducing new character and weapon models and additional armaments such as smoke grenades. The changes to the game went down very well, and Day of Defeat Source actually wound up getting a slightly higher average review score than the original. The updated graphics were the main source of praise for the game, with no one, from what we can tell at least, calling the source version ugly. Naturally, the gameplay, which critics reviewing the original were complimentary of, was also commended here, and the overall quality of the content was also subject to positive commentary. One or two did bemoan the lack of content, however, but in subsequent updates, Valve did add more, so that problem has largely been resolved. Number 15, Counter-Strike Global Effect. Offensive, PC, PS3, and Xbox 360. We come now to the first of what you might call the big hitters, the games that instantly spring to mind when you think of Valve. Counter-Strike Global Offensive, or CSGO as it's more colloquially known, was released worldwide for PC, PS3, and Xbox 360 in August 2012. It sees teams of players who assume the role of either the terrorists or the counter-terrorists facing off against each other in various game modes, the most common of which involve the terrorists trying to plant a bomb and the counter-terrorists attempting to stop them. In addition to its millions of fans all around the world, CSGO has a wildly popular esports scene where dozens of teams frequently compete in both third-party and Valve-sponsored competitions for grand cash prizes. Ever since its release, CSGO has been one of the most played games on Steam, and still draws in millions of players to this day. 
Critics were largely complimentary towards the game when it first came out, and though there were issues, namely the matchmaking that meant novices were getting thrown into games with pros, there was a great deal of praise for the fact that CSGO remained faithful to its predecessors, but was much more polished. Number 14. Team Fortress Classic PC. Team Fortress Classic is yet another title that was originally developed as a mod, this time for Quake, that Valve spotted and thought, huh, that's pretty good, we should make it a proper game. Whilst the original developers were working on a standalone version, Valve hired them to create a port of Team Fortress Classic as a mod for Half-Life, and the rest is history. This multiplayer FPS pits the red team against the blue team in one of three online modes – Capture the Flag, Control Point, and Assassination or Escort. Players get to choose from nine different classes, each of which have their own specialisations. So whether you prefer to play as a sharpshooter, a tank, or something else entirely, there's bound to be a character that fits your playstyle. The critical response to Team Fortress Classic was generally positive, and though one or two reviewers claimed it was just a less good version of Counter-Strike, others saw it for what it was – a nice bit of multiplayer fun with plenty of variety in its characters. Plus, there was the added bonus that if you owned Half-Life, it didn't cost a single penny. Number 13. Half-Life 2 Episode 1 – PC, PS3, Xbox 360, and Mobile You might be surprised to see Half-Life 2 Episode 1 so far down this list. After all, it garnered an average review score in the high 80s, so surely it deserves better than 13th place. Well, sadly, when you're a Valve game, a review score average of 87 still makes you kind of mediocre. So here we are, them's the rules. Half-Life 2 Episode 1 is the first of three planned episodic follow-ups to Half-Life 2, though only two ever actually made it out of the gate. The title continues where Half-Life 2 left off, and sees bespectacled hunk Gordon Freeman attempting to escape City 17 alongside his companion, Alex Vance. Players must make their way through a series of linear levels, interacting with allies, dispatching enemies, and solving physics-based puzzles as they go. Different weapons can be acquired throughout the game, though Gordon's greatest asset is undoubtedly the Gravity Gun, which is capable of picking up objects and firing them back at enemies at great speed. Reviews lauded the game, calling out the balance of puzzles and combat, the strength of Alex as a companion, and the title's pacing as reasons why players should jump in. Really, the only thing that let Episode 1 down was its length, and critics questioned if the 4-6 to six hour runtime justified its price. Number 12. Counter-Strike Source – PC Golly, Valve really did want to get all the miles they could out of the Source engine, didn't they? As the title might suggest, Counter-Strike Source is a port of Counter-Strike to Valve's Source engine. And from a gameplay perspective, it isn't really any different to the original game. Teams of players take on the role of either the terrorists or the counter-terrorists, and go head-to-head -to, -head to try to complete their objective before the other team can. The main difference between Counter-Strike and Counter-Strike Source was the marked improvement in the latter's graphics, with critics at the time falling over themselves to sing praises for just how beautiful the game looked. The environments were far more detailed, models had many more polygons, and the texture mapping had been greatly improved. As we know, though, just because a game is pretty, it doesn't necessarily follow that it's good. But thankfully for Counter-Strike Source, Valve managed to retain everything that players loved loved about the original, including its fast-paced, exciting gameplay and well-balanced multiplayer. In fact, Counter-Strike Source wound up attaining the exact same average review score as the original, and it really was down to the flip of a coin as to which one we should place higher in this list. In short, the game was a great source of entertainment. <laughs> Thank you very much. Time to learn about the original now. Ben? Number 11. Counter-Strike, PC and Xbox. More Counter-Strike now, but this time we're going all the way back to the year 2000 to look at the game that kickstarted the franchise. You may be shocked to learn that Counter-Strike was originally a mod for Half-Life created by Min, Gooseman Lee and Jess Cliff in 1999, who were later hired by Valve to continue its development and allow the studio to turn the mod into a full game. Gameplay-wise, Counter-Strike is a tactical first-person shooter in which players team up and take on the role of either the counter-terrorists, whose job it is to, well, counter-terrorists,
terrorists or the extremist forces who oppose them. The aim of the game varies depending on the map, but the most common objectives are bomb defusal or bomb planting if you want to get terrorist about this, hostage rescue or not, and protection of a VIP or their assassination. Counter-Strike immediately won itself thousands upon thousands of fans and impressed critics immensely. The graphics were great, the gunplay was balanced, and the game was masses of fun and hugely addictive as a result. Alas, it did let itself down a little due to a conscious decision on Valve's part that left the game wide open to cheaters, but there we are. Number 10. Left 4 Dead 2 PC and Xbox 360. Both Left 4 Dead and its sequel attained identical average review scores, so when it came to their placement on this list, it was left up to us and we decided to stick Left 4 Dead 2 in the lower position on the grounds that whilst both are great, Left 4 Dead was great first. Left 4 Dead 2, like its predecessor, is a first-person shooter with horror elements and focuses on four survivors as they attempt to endure the onslaught of the zombie horde. The game offers five different campaigns, with the aim of each being simply for players to escape with their lives. You can opt to play with friends, or those who prefer not to have other humans interfering with their gaming experience can play with AI survivors. Despite a plethora of controversy surrounding the title, as well as numerous bugs in the Xbox 360 version, Left 4 Dead 2 earned a great reception from critics and players alike upon its release in 2009. The addition of new weapons was welcomed with open arms, no pun intended. The environments were varied and exciting and the game had plenty of replay value. Left 4 Dead 2 was nominated for a number of awards and in 2016 won the Better With Friends accolade at Valve's own Steam Awards. No idea why, but this meme springs instantly to mind. Number 9. Left 4 Dead PC and Xbox 360. Well, since we've just looked at the sequel, I suppose we'd better tell you all about the original, hadn't we? Released in November 2008 for PC and Xbox 360, Left 4 Dead focuses on the efforts of four survivors, Bill, Zoe, Francis, and Lewis, to stay alive in the aftermath of a zombie outbreak on the east coast of the United States. Players take control of one of the four, with the others powered by AI or other humans, depending on how many friends they have, and the main goal is to reach the next safe area, be that by killing the infected or not. All survivors start out with a pistol and either a shotgun or a submachine gun, but more powerful weapons can be found as the game progresses, which is lucky, because players will be needing them to take on the special infected. Please, no more witches. Both critics and players were immediately taken with Left 4 Dead and admired the game's ability to make them feel like they were part of a highly tense Hollywood zombie movie. A little derision was directed at the Source engine, which was starting to show signs of age, but in spite of that, Valve were able to create a hugely atmospheric game that felt both desolate and hopeless to anyone who played it. Number 8. Dota 2 PC Before Dota 2, there was Dota, or Defense of the Ancients if you want to get what does that acronym stand for about this, a multiplayer online battle arena mod for Blizzard's Warcraft 3 Reign of Chaos. As we all know by now though, Valve just love a good mod, and they got in touch with Dota lead designer Icefrog, ultimately hiring him to design the sequel. The aim of Dota 2 is to win a match by banding together with four other players and attempting to destroy the opposing team's Ancient, a large structure situated within their base, whilst simultaneously defending their own. Each player controls their own hero, a character with unique abilities, and prior to the match they can choose from a roster of over 120 different heroes, which is, frankly, an obscene amount of choice. Like CSGO, Dota 2 has a massive esports scene, where top flight teams frequently compete against one another to earn prizes of millions and millions of dollars. In 2021, the international winners, Team Spirit from Moscow, took home a staggering $40 million. The critical response to Dota 2 was hugely positive, and the game was commended for its mechanics and balance, visual design, and voice acting, though it was admonished for its steep difficulty curve, which is, admittedly, somewhat off-putting to new players. Number 7. Portal, PC, PS3, Xbox 360, Nintendo Switch, and Mobile. Although we've decided not to include the orange box on this list, we must at least recognize it for giving us one of the most surprising games in video game history. Indeed, when players got their hands on the orange box, most were just excited to get to grips with Half-Life 2 Episode 2, but they ended up getting a cheeky little bonus in the form of Portal. Portal is a puzzle game unlike any other, well, except for Portal 2, naturally, and places players in control of Chell, a woman trapped in the Aperture Science in Center, who must solve a series of test chambers in order to make her escape, all whilst under the watchful, malevolent eye of GLaDOS, the AI overseer of the facility. To solve each chamber, players must carefully place a pair of interconnected portals using the Aperture Science handheld portal device, aka the Portal Gun, which can then be used to traverse the room, redirect projectiles, or relocate objects like the Companion Cube. This hugely entertaining puzzler went down a treat with critics, who were especially fond of the core gameplay mechanic and the game's dark, 
deadpan humor. The short runtime did catch some flack, but in the grand scheme of things, it was a minor complaint. Number 6. Half-Life 2 Episode 2 PC, PS3, and Xbox 360 We imagine you're sick of us mentioning Half-Life by now, and if that's the case, then I can only apologize, because we're gonna have to mention it at least a few more times. <laughs> Sorry. Half-Life 2 Episode 2 contains the story of Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 2 Episode 1, and we once again join Gordon Freeman and Alex Vance on their quest to reach a resistance base where they'll be able to continue their fight against the nefarious Combine. The game retains pretty much all of the original gameplay mechanics from Episode 1, though it adds even more puzzles, including the biggest puzzle in the entire series, the Damaged Bridge. Ugh. Episode 2 was still somewhat on the short side taking most players around six hours to finish, but aside from that, it was a wonderful game that was universally acclaimed by critics. The visuals were gorgeous, the environments expansive, and the writing and storytelling vivid, complex, and emotionally engaging. Perhaps the most galling thing about Half-Life Episode 2 is the fact that a third episode was planned, but has never materialized, and so fans have been left without a conclusion to the trilogy for close to two decades. We don't hold it against this game, though. We hold it against Valve. Number 5. Team Fortress 2 – PC, PS3, and Xbox 360 Another title that debuted as part of the Orange Box is Team Fortress 2, the sequel to 1999's Team Fortress Classic. As was the case for its predecessor, Team Fortress 2 sees players competing in teams, either red or blue, to complete objectives which are dictated by the game mode. There are five core game modes in total – Attack or Defend, Capture the Flag, Control Points, King of the Hill, and Payload – as well as multiple alternative ones, including the likes of Special Delivery and Medieval Mode. In addition, players can choose from one of nine playable characters, each of which are categorized as Offense, Defense, or Support, and come equipped with a minimum of three weapons. Although Team Fortress 2 is a competent multiplayer shooter, it's the game's personality that has won it so many fans over the years. The cartoonish graphics and resultant light-heartedness of the gameplay impressed players immensely, as did the distinctive appearances and personas of its roster of characters, its variety of game modes and maps, its level design, and its balanced gameplay. The lack of bots and the removal of the class-specific grenades did land TF2 in hot water with some critics, but these minor issues certainly weren't enough to spoil anyone's fun. Number 4. Half-Life Alex PC Although it wasn't exactly the Half-Life that fans had been crying out for all these years, it was impossible to be mad at Valve for releasing Half-Life Alex rather than Half-Life 3, on account of the fact that the game is just so gosh darn good. Sadly, for those who suffer from motion sickness, Half-Life Alex is a VR exclusive, but it's nothing short of the finest VR game ever made. The 2020 title is a prequel to Half-Life 2, and is set five years before Gordon Freeman joins the Resistance. As you might expect, players take on the role of Alex Vance, who embarks upon a mission to seize an alien superweapon belonging to the Combine, the intergalactic empire that's taken Earth by force. The most useful tool in Alex's arsenal is the Gravity Glove, which can be used much like the Gravity Gun to pick up items from a distance, allowing her to interact with objects and solve puzzles. The critical response to Half-Life Alex was staggering, and many felt that Valve had once again been able to reshape the first-person shooter genre by giving established FPS mechanics like reloading guns a VR twist, allowing players to fully immerse themselves in the world. Number 3. Portal 2 – PC, PS3, Xbox 360, and Switch As we mentioned, the original Portal's short runtime was the one thing that let it down, and because it only took players a few hours to beat, they were left wanting more. Thankfully, their prayers were answered in 2011 when Valve released a follow-up, Portal 2, which was superior to its predecessor in practically every way. Portal 2 takes place an indeterminate amount of time after the events of Portal, and once again sees Chell trapped in the Aperture Science Enrichment Center and forced to complete test chambers in order to secure her freedom. 
She's initially assisted by the hilarious but moronic Wheatley, though he ultimately ends up as the game's main antagonist, at which point Chell allies herself with GLaDOS, who now inhabits a potato battery. The game plays in much the same way as the original, but with several added elements, including tractor beams, lasers, and hard light bridges, which can be transmitted through portals. Portal 2 also includes a cooperative campaign, in which players take control of two robots, Atlas and Peabody, who must work together in order to solve the test chambers. Everything that made Portal great was present in Portal 2, and every new feature was executed to perfection. If Portal was a delicious Black Forest Gatto, Portal 2 was also a delicious Black Forest Gatto, except this time, it wasn't a lie. Number 2. Half-Life, PC and PS2 Well, it would seem that one of Valve's finest offerings is actually the first one they ever developed. Released for PC in 1998 and for PS2 in 2001, Half-Life is one of the greatest first-person shooters, nay, greatest video games ever made. Set in the Black Mesa Research Facility, Half-Life follows scientist Gordon Freeman, who must escape the complex when it's invaded by hostile aliens. The game was a product of its creator's disdain for the state of the FPS genre at the time. They wanted to create an immersive world for players, rather than just throwing an endless parade of mindless enemies at them. Half-Life holds an almost perfect score on aggregator Metacritic, and was considered by critics at the time to perhaps be the best first-person shooter since the original Doom. The level of immersion was considered revolutionary, the environments awe-inspiring, and the gameplay balanced, exciting, and varied, combining fast-paced shooter action with challenging puzzles. In fact, just about the only thing that let Half-Life down was the final portion of the game, as the controls and physics were a little wonky here, but that did little to spoil any of the amazing content that came before it. Number 1. Half-Life 2 – PC, PS3, Xbox, Xbox 360, and Mobile Since Half-Life and its sequel, Half-Life 2, both have an average review score of 96 out of 100, the decision of which to put in first place was left to us, and honestly it was like a headcrab-themed Sophie's Choice. Released in 2004, Half-Life 2 takes place around 20 years after the Black Mesa incident, by which point Earth has fallen under the control of the Combine, who were able to conquer the planet in just seven hours after the incident attracted their attention. Players once again take on the role of bespectacled hunk Gordon Freeman, who joins the Resistance group led by Dr. Eli Vance and works alongside his new allies to liberate Earth from the clutches of the Combine. Half-Life 2 is frequently cited amongst the best games of all time. And the reasons for this include its highly innovative take on the first-person shooter genre, its, for the time, cutting-edge graphics, its well-written and engrossing story, and its deep, complex characters. Even two decades after its initial release, Half-Life 2 holds up as one of the finest first-person shooters ever made. Half-Life may have blazed the trail, but Half-Life 2 worked out the kinks to make the ride one that every gamer should experience at some point in their lives. 